Hi everyone and welcome to episode 2 of this new series of tales from a very minor celebrity. A delve into my celebrity archive and a look back at some of my favourite interviews from my career in radio and TV. I hope you enjoy listening to them as much as I did recording them. Now this week is the turn of Ruby Wax, the American-British actress, comedian, writer, television personality and mental health campaigner. She's a classically trained actress and was with the Royal Shakespeare Company for five years and co-starred on the ITV sitcom Girls on Top. She came to prominence as a comic interviewer on television shows including The Full Wax, Ruby Wax Meets and The Ruby Wax Show. And she was a script editor on the BBC sitcom Absolutely Fabulous, also appearing in two episodes. She holds both American and British citizenship and has resided in the UK since the 70s. In 2013, she gained a master's degree in mindfulness-based cognitive therapy from Kellogg College, Oxford, and was awarded an OBE in 2015 for services to mental health. Her memoirs, How Do You Want Me? and Sane New World, both reached number one on the Sunday Times bestseller list. We chatted in early 2000 when she was hired to promote duty-free shopping at airports, of all things. But that was just a small part of this very enjoyable chat that we had, which started by her telling me about a very amusing journey she had with the legendary Zsa Zsa Gabor, one of her guests on her series Ruby Wax Meets. She was so crazy that she wanted to get me to her where she kept her horses. But Josh had no sense of direction, so the journey lasted four days. <laughs> and sadly, her driver was on some kind of, um, let's say, illegal substance. Oh, right. Had less idea where we were going. And eventually, Josh and I ended up somewhere in Alabama, I think, and with people... Well, you know, who were kind of half. I, I think we know, you know what, what you mean. I mean. And so we ended up lost. And eventually there was a traffic accident and a cop stuck his head in and said, I'm sorry, there's been an incident. And she said, darling, was he driving at, at Chevrolet? <laughs> and thinking it was her husband. Right. And so he said, uh, no. And she went, thank you, darling. And pushed the button and the window went up into the cop's head and pretty much took his nose off. And the journey continued. And so I thought, let's do documentaries. What are some of your favorite interviews? I particularly liked uh, when you met Roseanne Barr, for example. Yeah, I would say that's a big favorite because, you know, just the fact that if you plan stuff, it's got a real self-consciousness to it. But we did. It was a love fest. You know, sometimes you do fall in love with someone. And we ended up in her bathtub, in her dry bathtub. And she said she was going on and on about wanting everything. And I said, that's just because you're a big pig. (laughs) And she looked at me and it was total understanding. And she went, so are you. <laughs> we just understood each other as females. And yeah. we just, you know, and, and we did stay in touch with, with each other. Nothing's better than when you're really getting on with somebody. And nothing's worse than when you're faking it. Do you stay in touch with a lot of the people that you do interview? I stayed in touch with her. I would say I'm still in touch. I mean, I didn't talk to her this morning. All right. And Carrie Fisher, I've been stuck with for many years. <laughs> <laughs> I was wanted to interview her. Now I can't get rid of her. Some people just want to just call and call and call because you do have this kind of, you know, it was like being in Fame Academy. Something yeah. about a camera intensifies your relationship. Yeah. I get really upset when I get turned down by people, you know. So do I. I'm devastated. Really? Oh, just devastated. I think... First of all, you know, the way I do get them is they'll tell their friend. They'll say, no, she's really fun. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, then I'm thrilled. Yeah. Sometimes people who don't know you think, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to do anything. You know, nobody ever wrote a letter of complaint. And publicity is publicity. And if you want something out, all you have to do is tell me because I ain't live. Well, let's uh, talk about uh, traveling because you do travel a lot. You must have seen inside uh, quite a few airports in your time. Duty free is my middle name. <laughs> and thus I came to work for them because they just, you know, when they, when you see that face just once too often and because it expanded, you know what I mean? It's like when I left Chicago, everything became sophisticated and theater started to flourish and buildings became more interesting. And so, same with airports. I remember you'd go there and, you know, it was the most depressing moment. And now suddenly whole shopping centers, every airport have, has a hefty case of Galleria. Absolutely. And for some reason, I'm in a good mood. You know, well, what's some reason? I'm getting out of London. You know, my life's going to change. I'm going to 
you know, my regular habit is going to stop. Mm. So I, I go in the minute they touch me and start feeling me for, you know, objects of, you know, wiring. I'm already happy and I hug them back. And by the time I give them my passport, I'm skipping in there. So I'm in a mood to spend. I'm in a mood to spend money. And if it's 15 percent less, yeah. you know how it can become a religious experience. You know, and, and all those people you, you have to give gifts to, but you don't like them so much, but you owe them. And yeah. if you can get them perfume that's 40 percent less. <laughs> yes. Boy. And then you don't have to travel with this stuff. You can hold it at the airport. It's a good idea, isn't a it? A little pile of Christmas presents. I have 10 years worth of Christmas presents piled up. It's a great time to grab people as well because we've got loads of money. We've got all our holiday money on us and we're just itching to spend it. Yeah, so spend it early. Then you can get on with seeing the place. You know, mm. some people get there and you come back and you go, this was fantastic. I got this African shrunken head. I've gone there, <laughs> you know what I mean, because you're deluded by the time you get there, where I got everybody like the most grotesque, contiki kind of, you know, one of those women with the sagging breasts, <laughs> a keychain. <laughs> and everybody goes, did Ruby Wax give you that? Because I get like 450 of them. And they're always bummers. You've always made the wrong decisions. So do it at the airport where they still understand what civilized man might want. <laughs> yes. I think, what, what was it I bought? somebody from um, uh, some outrageous airport. You think it really makes sense out there. Yeah. I think it yeah. was a, um, a stuffed scorpion or something like that. It was you know these... how many friends of mine have blowfish that you can use as a lamp? <laughs> yeah. And I go to their homes and I find it behind doors <laughs> used as a doorstop and cracked in half. I said, a blowfish? Come on, and it's yeah. a lamp. I read with interest, and I don't believe it, that men actually spend more than women in duty-free shops. I can't believe Isn't that. Isn't that weird? No. Well, I think because they have guilt money. I'd tell you what it is as well, because I, I walk around the duty free and the first thing I do is go to the boys' toys. You know, there's always yeah. something electrical that I can, you know, always wished I had. And you look at the price, you think, oh, now's the time. It's smaller than last time. You know, mm. you guys, in everything else you want big. But yeah. in this thing, you want small. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a perfect yin and yang. Yeah, yeah. Ruby does the business. That's a good program. Have you seen it? I have, yes. Oh, okay. I love these sort of programs where you meet people that you wouldn't necessarily um, expect to see on television. You know, you, you sort of meet the entrepreneurs and the business makers, the, the movers and shakers. Mm. These guys are really publicity shy, and that's what really makes them interesting. The, you know, them and politicians are the last people that want anything personally said. So that was a real challenge because not that I needed something personal, but sometimes there's usually a tragedy, you know, or there's something really big that pushes somebody to make a billion. Mm. And so I love the challenge. It's like mountain climbing on just a bigger rock face. You know, mm. celebrities used to talk, you know, it's it's like sleeping with somebody who slept with too many people. Yeah. These were virgins. Is this a more interesting interview for you than doing Goldie Horn, for example? Well, it was everything in its time, you know, there was a time when I never knew anybody who was like, you know, that famous. And so that was really exciting. It's just like a sport. And now I don't know anybody who has a billion pounds, you mm. know, who really talk to me. Usually, you know, they're sitting at the head of the table and they have their wives do all the yapping and they just, you know, nod their head. Yeah. But to really get them to say what um, goes on in their minds is so interesting. Yeah. It's different than what happens in your, you and my mind. And um, what's next for you as well? Because uh, you are such a, a busy woman. What's, what's coming up next for you? Well, I am going into business. And we may be filming that business, but I can't say what it is. Oh, fantastic. What a great yeah. idea. Well, because I, I, you know, while I was with these guys, I thought, let's use them for all they're worth. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I was with models, I would have said, teach me how, because, you know, I'm ready to model. But with business guys, you know, I, I, I can't start an empire. I'm too late for that. And that's born in the, that's in your gene pool. Mm. But I, I, I can be obsessed about something. Um, and so they, I just said, give me some names and how do you do this? Brilliant. When can we expect to see this? I have to, it takes a long time to manufacture something, so I may be very old. So you're actually going to design something? Yeah. Or... I hope you buy it. No, absolutely. I'll be in duty free selling it at 15% off. <laughs> we'll give away one on the program as a yes, prize. Yes, we'll give away one. Yeah, all right. But it'll take a long time. The wonderful Ruby Wax. Now, next week, you'll hear an interview I did with a young South African woman called Tandili. Nothing amazing about that, you may think, until I tell you that her surname is Mandela. It was one of those times when you think that you're going to do a fairly ordinary interview with a group of South African musicians who were doing a short tour around the UK back in 2007, playing traditional African music. And then you find out that one of those musicians is one of Nelson Mandela's grandchildren. 
and what a delight she was. Not only did she speak to me about her grandfather, of course, but she also performed some music as well. That's Tandili Mandela next week on Tales from a Very Minor Celebrity. Oh, 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 oh,